So, I got some of these TP-Link Casa smart plugs. And like the Wiz light bulbs I've messed with before, I'd rather control them myself. Especially given that TP-Link is uh, in the news lately for, you know, security problems. Uh, but this isn't just a TP-Link issue. IoT devices like this have a reputation for security problems. So many problems, in fact, that in this case, I didn't have to do a lot of work myself. A quick Google search turned up this paper by Andrew Halterman, uh, which references several other papers, uh, but this paper by itself covers everything I need. So every time some company makes one of these things, a university student gets their master's degree. So this paper is from a few years ago, and the hardware referenced is one of these things. It's quite clunky. Um, this is the model HS100, so I found this at a Goodwill. Um, and the paper says it straight up runs Linux, and it does that because buried down in here is a Atheros AR9331. So Atheros is known for uh, making Wi-Fi chips and MIPS-based router chips. So they were later bought out by Qualcomm, and have I've done some, uh, you know, bare bones nine front kernels that will actually run on these things. So this one here is uh, one of the newer models. I got one actually cracked open. Um, and this is the KP125. Um, so on the other hand, this uses a, uh, let's see, that's where it is right there. Put the screenshot up. Um, this uses a Realtek chip. It's an RTL8710 variant. So this is Wi-Fi and an ARM3 microcontroller. So not really a step down, um, you know, running a full-featured Wi-Fi router chip for some smart plug like this is kind of overkill. Uh, but even though they're very different chips from each other, uh, they accept the same commands. And the commands are JSON strings um, with a twist, but I'll get to that later. Uh, as we can see here, there are quite a few options. Uh, the two most interesting ones for me are the git sysinfo and emeter. So git sysinfo is pretty self-explanatory. It gets the basic info on the device. And for a smart plug, the important parts here are the state of the relay. You know, that's if it's letting power through or not. The other is the e-meter, which returns stats on power use. So not all of these uh, seem to come with this feature, but I bought ones that did. And digging deeper into this, uh, they found another useful command that could be sent. So these things are given a location when you use the phone app to set them up. So they store your latitude and longitude and will broadcast them back out, you know, to anyone who sends it a git sysinfo command. Uh, the twist I mentioned before is that they try to encrypt this. However, it is a very easy to break encryption. When I started playing around with this stuff myself using Wireshark, I found that they already are set up to just decrypt it for you. So armed with this, I'm ready to take control of my smart plugs. And the rest of the paper is a pretty good read about various ways these things can be used to cause trouble. Uh, the footnotes have links to other examples. Um, some are that uh, the git sysinfo command can be sent a spoofed IP, making the device send a packet to some victim, and uh, that can be done rather rapid fire. Uh, another was uh, that a garbage error message could be sent to one plug with a spoofed IP for a second plug. And it would reply with the garbage error back to the second plug, which would cause the second plug to send a garbage error response back to the first, and so on. You know, getting sort of a packet storm going. Um, so part of taking control is that I can put these on a separate closed-off wireless network uh, to avoid these issues. Or at least some of them. So I did up a few test programs, and this one here is going to uh, run the, uh, the git sysinfo command. Um, so I've already used the phone app to get the MAC address of these things and uh, put them into NDB local and Ninefront's DHCP server now hands out the uh, addresses to them. Um, so that means that I can just go ahead and use the name it's given. So I got plug number two here. So I'm going to just use the uh, dial command on that. So these things are on uh, you know TCP on port. 9999. So I get that, you know, 
put the command into a buffer, uh, and then run the uh, encryption on it. So there are uh, two parts to the encryption. Let's see, that'd be back up here. So uh, part of it is it has to be encrypted. Um, and then the other part is that it's then prefixed with the uh, length of the, uh, the JSON string here. And it's a 32-bit big Indian integer. So it's in what's called network order. Um, but since I'm running on an ARM processor here, which stores data in little Indian, I just manually flip the things around here. So with that, I then fire off, uh, you know, that. And uh, when I get back to response, I basically, you know, run the decryption on it, uh, which is same sort of thing, but in reverse. And in this case, I have to also start reading by shifting over uh, four bytes because it's going to come back with a 32-bit big Indian integer on the front of it. And yeah, the git sysinfo actually returns like a decent amount of bytes. Uh, it was one of the reasons that, that was said that it could be uh, used for DDoS attacks. Um, so I got a little bit here, pulled in the uh, nine French JSON library, and just have a thing here to parse it really quick and just sort of spit it out into some more readable text. And so yeah, that's basically the, uh, oops, the whole thing here. It goes through, you know, sets up the connection to the plug, returns a file descriptor. I encrypt my command. I write that file descriptor out. Um, and then, you know, clear out some buffers for the reply. You know, wait a little bit for the thing to process before actually doing a read. Uh, decrypt the read, parse it out, and print the whole thing and then exit. So I got some commands here that I can run and I got the thing, you know, in the little side of the screen. So let's go ahead and run some commands. So I can run the git sysinfo. And it comes back with a response. So you can see it's like a big unwieldy blob here, uh, but it prints it out. So one of the other things I did was a little program that would uh, use that command I found in the paper and uh, put in zeros for the uh, my latitude and longitude. But yeah, it returns, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, the model, all sorts of things, you know, how the wireless is doing. And, you know, very importantly, the uh, relay state, which is on. Uh, there's also a little uh, LED sort of on the side of this thing that can be set to uh, on or off. Uh, but it's kind of reversed in this thing. You can set it to be off. So it could be off is true and on is false. So it's kind of something to keep in mind. So I got a little bulb running in here. I can go ahead and run emeter. And it will come back. Oh, it's actually saying it's not really using much power. That's interesting. But I can also power it off. And power it on. See if the e-meter returns anything now. I should have put in a beefier light bulb. But anyway, uh, that's basically it for now. Uh, so now I'm going to take the steps, uh, you know, all the stuff I've learned, you know, running these little things and try to package them up into a file system. So my goal is to have something that works like my Wiz light bulb controller um, that I can run it off some Raspberry Pi somewhere. And being that it exposes the whole thing as files, I can then share those over the network since all these things speak uh, 9P. Um, and then I control, I can control the plugs from basically any computer. Um, this will take a bit more work than the whiz bulbs as these things like return a lot of stuff that needs to be parsed and turned into something useful. And then also I have to parse for any commands I send in to go back out. But uh, anyway, until then, uh, have fun.